G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Saturday morning here in Australia, Bitcoin now under 39%, oh sorry, under 40% dominance at 39%, so dropping fast. Oof. ETH nearly at 20%, gas prices 112. Obviously the market has corrected a little bit. Uh, I'm still slightly nervous uh, at the moment and I'll show you why when we get to the charts. Uh, Bitcoin itself is not looking... Uh, all that strong at the moment but look again it has been bought back but it's really ranging around that kind of forty nine fifty thousand dollar mark at the moment it's really stuck there it's not pumping much higher and it's not pumping much lower either it's just kind of yeah sort of stuck but look as long as it can hold that line then I'm not too worried but we'll get into that shortly all right we can see it's a bit of a mixed bag red and green all over the place there's definitely coins that have done well like doge you know making a strong comeback straight away uh ethereum back above four thousand dollars again so doing really well but there's some red in there so let's start with what's done great what has pumped polygon i mean we were talking about this at a dollar 14 i think it was yesterday and now it's nearly a dollar 50 up 40 percent this just goes from strength to strength to strength Ethereum Classic made a bit of a comeback. Yearn Finance, Aave, $600 going on an absolute tear. Polkadot doing well. We got some Polkadot news. Telecoin, Synthetics Network, $21. So doing nice as well. Maybe that DeFi summer sort of stuff is happening a little bit earlier than suspected. And we can see Dogecoin, Phantom. Look, plenty of coins have done extremely well in the last 24 hours. But they're still down a lot. Now, not all of them. But again, you know, like Bitcoin gold, up 10%, that's great, but it's still down 26, nearly 27% for the last seven days. So that's just a bit of a rebound. And what, what, what oh, excuse me, what we're waiting to see, is it just a bit of a fake out? So it pumps back up and gets everyone excited before it rolls over and goes even lower. And that's definitely possible. All right, so we've seen what's done well in the last 24 hours. What hasn't done so well in the last 24 hours? Not too much actually, so there we can see. It's mainly kind of the stable coins that are sort of down a little bit, and some of them even up a little bit, but really again, nothing too much happening. But LEO token is the only token really in the top 100 that has had a bit of a hit. But that's to be expected when you see these big dips. You know, the market has been bought back pretty quick. So again, we're at 2.5 trillion. We got down to I think 2.2 trillion and now we're nearly back at 2.4 trillion. So hopefully that dip is all over and that was it. But in all fairness, I am just kind of remaining calm at the moment. Look, I, again, I did some shopping the other day and most of that's paid off at the moment. So I'm pretty happy with that. But I am still somewhat concerned that that may change and we go lower. But again, I spoke about what happened, what I think will happen, and that is the 200-day moving average is going to continue to move up towards where we already are and that we'll find some support off of that. But let's go to the charts and have a look, the Bitcoin chart, the all-important chart. So as we can see, we've got two days, and look, this is about to do the same thing again. This is 11.45 at night over in the States, and indecision candles. So two indecision candles in a row. So the market really is unsure of what it wants to do. Because really it is going to be based around Bitcoin. Look, as long as Bitcoin doesn't really kind of dip down, uh, I mean, if it does dip down into here, it's not the end of the world. But if it really does break below kind of the $42,000 level, then yeah, I think we'd be in for a much heavier correction. And it's more panic buying. I think a lot, uh, panic selling, sorry. I think a lot of what's going on is total market manipulation. I don't think anyone thinks Bitcoin's dead and that it's, you know, way too environmentally unfriendly to buy. I think there's some FUD being put out there so the big boys can get in and buy a whole lot more nice and cheap. And, you know, the new money slash the dumb money, and I don't like that term, but that's what it's referred to as, will panic sell and there'll be more to buy. For me, I haven't sold any Bitcoin and the Bitcoin I have, you know, I'm only going to sell if it gets to really kind of crazy high prices, two, dollars $300,000 and I might sell some. Anything short of that, I'm not interested. I'm just going to hold on to my Bitcoin plain and simple. But I am sort of happy to buy some at around about this kind of $50,000 mark and anything below $50,000, I'm pretty happy to buy as well. 
All right, so again, we've already been over that. I, I, we looked at that yesterday. Let's go on to some of the interesting things I found in the news. All right, so Dogecoin developers say they've been working with Elon Musk since 2019. Now, I think, you know, the way this has been worded is they've probably been speaking to him. I don't know so much if they've been, you know, really developing and working with him. So I'd say that's a slight uh, sensationalized kind of headline grabber. Uh, in all fairness, they are working with him to make the cryptocurrency a cheaper, greener alternative to Bitcoin. So again, I would say that's probably recently. They're probably definitely been doing that. That wouldn't surprise me. But since back in 2019, no, I think they've just had a couple of calls here and there and he's given them some ideas and things like that. But I don't think they've heavily been working with him since then. That's my personal opinion. I could be completely wrong and we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, until we kind of see the proof that that's what it is again i think dogecoin uh haven't come out with this headline i think it's probably the person that wrote this article so uh adriana hamacha has probably used that to you know get a few po few more people to read the headline but anyway again it could be wrong we'll have to wait and see and like i said with dogecoin you know the people have spoken and they're pretty keen on dogecoin so it could be that self-fulfilling uh Prof I can't even say it, self-fulfilling prophecy that the people say Dogecoin is real and it suddenly becomes real. And look, I'm all right with that as well. If the people say that it's real and, you know, provided enough people, you know, with smart minds and that can work on it, including uh, Elon, then maybe Dogecoin will be the, you know, the next kind of Bitcoin, the next world reserve currency. Who knows? I think that might be pushing it a little bit too much, but I think it'll definitely be adopted i mean it has kind of been adopted already all right moving on so nft craze has been out there and just continues to grow and grow and grow here's some of the hurdles that it's going to have to face because it's such a new thing so nba top shots user sues dapper labs and claims the nft moments are securities so these uh, the case claims that dapper labs failed to let customers cash out of their nba top shot nfts in good time so yeah, I don't know how that is going to work in uh, court and all the rest of it. Because I don't understand why, you know, if you hadn't have bought it, you couldn't sell it literally two seconds later. Again, I didn't really get into the NFTs themselves, more just, you know, really engine. Uh, that's something I really like. Uh, Chili's is something I, I was looking at. Wax is uh, something I was looking at as well, but mainly engine. Um, that shouldn't really get affected by this kind of stuff but the actual nfts and who's building the nfts again so like dapper labs and things like that they're the ones who are gonna you know have to sort of answer some of these questions you know if they're built on top of chilies or engine labs or something or engine sorry i don't think they're gonna have to worry too much but that's very very interesting and it'll be interesting to see what the uh outcome of this is and in all fairness i think there's going to be a number of court cases around cryptocurrencies over the next sort of you know five to maybe even 10 years i think in 10 years time it should have sorted itself out but over the next few years because it's still a very unregulated space and everything's so new and we don't have that legal framework behind things at the moment so i think you'll see a number of court cases brought against a number of projects over the next few years and that's really going to set the precedence for what's acceptable what's not acceptable what you know what can be done what can't be done and all things like that i mean some of these nba you know uh top shots like i, I saw some of them they look cool and i was like yep I wouldn't mind buying some of them, but just not at the prices I saw them going for. Because it's in that bull market, I think they're going to be way overpriced. And I'll go back and look at some of those, you know, in the next bear market and kind of see where they are and whether they've held their price or whether they're a lot cheaper. Because I would say that they're a lot cheaper now. And that's why people are a little bit upset because they hit these kind of crazy prices, but they weren't able to sell them quick enough to take advantage of that. All right. Binance uh, Smart Chain, they have had a number of issues. So 1.18 million, sorry, $1 million was drained from the PancakeSwap lottery pool a few weeks ago via an exploit. The Binance Smart Chain continues to see some of the projects uh, being built on it exploited. The latest was done by someone who had access to the PancakeSwap admin address. So again, whether they hacked into that or not, you know, at the moment, it looks like they just had access, so it was kind of done from within. Binance, yeah, 
I'm a fan of Binance. I've definitely used Binance. But all these new projects that are coming out on Binance, not all of them, but only a number of them, uh, they've had so many problems with them that I'm just, I'm super glad I sort of stayed away from them and didn't really get into them. And not even just, you know, on Binance Smart Chain, just really, really new projects in general. I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm not saying I've never invested in any of them. I have back in 2017, a number of ICOs. And unfortunately, none of the ICOs that I invested in did any well. They were all duds, every single one of them. And that's, and that's where I've learned my lesson is I'd rather wait a little while and see that a project has been building for a while and doing things and they've got development. You know, I'll accept that I might miss out on the absolute crazy gains but I don't want to simply chuck too much money into things that were never going anywhere and were scams and weren't properly tested from the very start. And that's one of the lessons I learned from 2017. I've seen a number of ones going this year in 2021 and I've invested in none of them. I haven't invested in any kind of brand new startup companies, you know, at the ICO kind of stage or, you know, pre uh, coin release, whatever they're calling it these days. I've stayed away from all of that. I've waited for projects to have been around for at least a little while before I've jumped on board. All right, Polkadot. So finally, the, you know, the, the power chains and that are starting to happen. As I've said before in other videos, pretty much every cryptocurrency that you're investing in at the moment is still a, a work in progress. They're not the finished product. There are some finished products out there. I'm not saying there's none, but they're all still a promise and Polkadot's been one of them. And they're talking about the power chains and things like that and they've been coming for a while. Now it's finally going to happen because Kasama is like the test net. So things will be you know, put on Kasama and tested there. And if they do well, then they can go to auction to buy a power chain and actually be put on the legit Polkadot network. So Polkadot has added power parachain auctions and crowd loans to Kasama and West End. They're two of the much awaited features. So the Polkadot network is on the verge of making, major, of making some major updates. So they're getting ready to release those parachains and for things to become legit on, because Polkadot's the, the, you know, the, the kind of end product, even though it's not finished. And Kasama is the test net. Um, West End, I'm guessing, is a test net as well. I don't know, to, I don't know too much about West End. But these parachains, they're the thing that everyone's been talking about and going to free up the network, you know, scaling and all the rest of it. And it will work in with Ethereum. So this is big news for Polkadot. And again, maybe it's had something to do with the Polkadot price continuing to, you know, to, to rise. So if we go back and we refresh, and we'll go down to Polkadot. It's been doing all right. Not too bad. Getting up to that sort of $50 mark. I mean, Kasama's worth $200 though. So it's doing quite well, but Polkadot still only $47. Once Polkadot gets to that final, you know, all the parachains and out there, I think there's going to be a very steep rise from Polkadot. In my personal opinion, that's never financial advice. There we go. We can see Bitcoin back down again, struggling to get above that $50,000 mark. And I think we've probably traded sideways for a little while, in all fairness. All right, last but not least, so Square Cash App. They made a big investment into Bitcoin earlier in the year. So over the course of 2020 and 2021, Square Cash App bought over 20 million, 200, sorry, million dollars worth of Bitcoin. At present, the payments company does not anticipate picking up any more of the asset, according to its chief financial officer, uh, Amrita Ahuja. I'm gonna, sorry if I butchered that, I really do apologize. So again, they were... Happy to get in, and I think they were buying it like well under sort of $30,000. I think it was around the $20,000 mark-ish, thereabouts. They've got their position, and now they're happy to hold, you know, Square Cash App. They obviously think that Bitcoin is going to come down and become a lot cheaper at the bottom of the next bull run than where it is now, and that's why they're not uh, buying any more Bitcoin. That would be my personal opinion on why they're doing it, and that's kind of where I am too. I'm happy to buy Bitcoin under sort of 50,000. I'll throw a little bit of cash at it, but really it's more back down around with the 200 day moving averages, which is around 38,000. That's where I'd be more enticed to really get into Bitcoin at those kind of prices and definitely below. Uh, above that, again, I'll throw a little bit of money at it here and there, but you know, the bulk of my money at the moment is going into the altcoins because I know once they finally do get on their run and you know go completely and utterly crazy, and they will, 
that's where the biggest gains are. And once I take my money from those gains, then I'll look to convert some of that back into Bitcoin and other things. Anyway, we all know my sort of thesis and where I'm going. I want to know your your kind of plan. You know, are you planning to cash out at the end of this bull run, thereabouts anyway, you don't have to time it exactly right, or are you planning to just swap everything into Bitcoin, or are you just a Bitcoin maximalist, or you know maybe an ETH maximalist? I'd love to know your plan of what you're going to do with your coins, or are you simply hodling, uh, you know, basically really long term in everything that you've invested in? Are you just a hodler kind of till the end, and then you know when you're ready and feel like you need to uh, sell some of those coins? Is that your plan? All right, so sad day morning here in Australia. I'm, you know, I'm still thinking we might see some more downside over the weekend. I don't think we'll see too much upside because if we do, a CME gap will be created and that's likely to get closed again on Monday morning. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I could definitely see us going down lower though. How much lower? That's really gonna be the question. Maybe around that kind of $46,000, $47,000 mark where there's a whole lot of support that wouldn't surprise me. Anything under than that, I would be a little bit surprised, but not completely surprised. All right, well, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. If you're on that game train at the moment, congratulations to you and well done, and I'll see you next time.